Hi everyone, just a second. Just switching over to 4G instead of our Wi-Fi because it's running a little slow today. So, how are you all? Just gonna jump on so I can see comments. Okay, it's Sharon here again from the blog I Restore Stuff, where I love to upcycle and refinish furniture. I'm from Australia. If you've just joined Essential Stencils page and you've never seen a live here before, you'll get to know some of the ambassadors. We are enjoying some beautiful weather here in Australia. As you can see, the sun's shining through into my workshop. And I'm just fighting with that a little bit. We're moving into winter, so the sun shifts around, um, comes straight through the window there. But I'm going to shift down to our project in just a minute. I'm just going to get our live going right here on my laptop so I can actually see the comments going back and forth, making sure that, yes, there we are. Hi, guys. Rebecca says, hi, Sharon. Coffee made and ready in Bris Vegas. She's from Brisbane. Um, I'm from just south of Brisbane, so I kind of call Brisbane home. Um, born and raised here actually. So hey guys, how are you all? Good to see you all here today. And I'm going to be working today on a project which is a huge vertical welcome sign. So at the moment I've got it horizontally to try and get it in the full screen for you. But it's actually going to be running this way, vertical, making a welcome sign in Hampton style. So just wanted to feature some of our new stencils that Essential Stencils put out recently. The welcome, vertical welcome is not brand new, but a lot of the other stencils, oops, sorry. Oh, there's Alison. Hey, Alison, how are you? Um, a lot of the other stencils are, and there's just so many that you can actually use with your welcome sign. So I'll just show you that for starters. There's the vertical welcome sign that we'll be working on today on this board. Um, which is, I'm going to have to do a little bit of measuring and figuring out because I just used any board that I had on hand and it's actually going to be a little short for just spacing that all out but I'm going to show you a way that you can trick the stencils and um, make it fit. That's what we're going to do. The other stencil set that I want to use today is By the Sea. Now all of these are up in the description of the live and if you use, as always, if you use our ambassador codes, so my code is I Restore Stuff. If you use that code or any of the links here in the live today, you'll be able to get 10% off all of your essential stencils, um, anything you order. And yes, they ship to Australia too. I hope you can see that. It looks kind of blurry on my laptop there, but this one is called By the Sea. And there's also, so not to be confused with their nautical set. Let me just show you what's in the By the Sea set. I'll use the black background here so you can see them. But we've got, this has got the pelican. Isn't that gorgeous? The octopus. Um, huge whale, a little crab, and we've got the compass, north, south, east, west. I'm going to be using that one today, and a lighthouse. And I'm going to see if I can use that one today also. So uh, these are some of the pieces that you will find. Now, with the welcome set, I think it was Melissa who did yesterday used the sports stencils. So these are the other ideas that you can use. So instead of with your welcome set, you can see mine has been well used. As I place it out, um, there's the letter O here is around about the same size as your sports icons. So see, there's beautiful sets like that Melissa used yesterday. And there's also these seasonal stencil sets that you can use to replace just that letter O there. So there's some fun ideas that you could play around with. Now the seasonal set has got all of these different um, different stencils in them. That, you know, leaves for autumn, there's the um, stars and stripes star for 4th of July, there's hearts, there's pumpkins, there's four leaf clovers, and even some snow, some pineapple for summer. So there you go. All right, I am looking a little bit bright, but we'll move down to the to the board that I'm working on today. Kim says, I love the shelves behind you. What a great way to organize your colors. Yes, those are my fusion paints. I'm a retailer for fusion paint and milk paint in Australia, Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint. But today I've actually got a new paint to show you. I've 
I'm not going to actually show you much about the paint today, but I just wanted to use it. Um, a good friend of mine who actually joined us on the live just before, Alison, if she's there, makes um, in Australia artisan paint. So there it is there. So I've actually painted this board with this colour, travertine. So that's a chalk clay based paint. Um, and it just went on so smoothly. I've just got two coats there and it really actually covered really well with one. It's a really lovely white. It's just a fraction off white, beautiful Hamptons colour. So if you're in Aussie, look up Alison's page, Artisan Paint. And to do my stencil today, I want to use this colour Monaco, which is a really deep, I feel like that's a real Hamptonsy, seasidey kind of ocean, deep, deep ocean bluey colour. That's how I'm going to describe it. It's called Monaco. So you can imagine the coast of Monaco would have that, you know. So there you go. Um, yeah, in Australia, a chalk paint. There's a lot of lovely chalk paints around. So to do my stenciling though first, before I even open up the paint, here I'm getting all excited. I wanted to show you how I'm going to place this welcome stencil vertically because as I said before, it doesn't quite fit all the way down. We've got to get our letters all right. As you can tell, I haven't cleaned it up exactly right. If you do have any questions about the stencils, um, let us know. Joyce says, Aussie love. Are you from Australia, Joyce? Wave your Aussie flag, guys. If you're from Australia, I'd love to know. Oh, and don't forget to share the, I'm just gonna do that really quickly. So I love to share this on my page because I have a, a page called I Restore Stuff. Where is my page? More options, there we go. Um, I'm gonna share that to my I Restore Stuff page. Just make sure everyone over there can see us live. So, um, I love to share it with my group. So if you know someone who's DIY, you can actually either tag them in the, um, in the comments or share this in Messenger. You can do all sorts of little options to sprinkle the love around, share some little DIY love. So let me just uh, do that right now. Thank you so much. Beth said she sprinkled. <laughs> That's a, a code word for um, hitting that share button. Where's my group? Okay, sorry, we've got to just, I Restore Stuff You Can Too is the name of my group that I uh, love to get all our paint customers in there sharing all of their ideas, their inspiration. I even put stencils on furniture, you know, so that's a lot of, a lot of fun. <clears throat> all right, so measuring out here, my welcome, it's actually the board's a little short, but I'm going to just make it fit. So see that in between these letters, a lot of people, well, some people will say, well, we, would, we could just cut the letters. I could, but I kind of like don't like cutting things. <laughs> I like to just leave it and place it there because when you do um, butt these side by side right up together on that join there, the spacing is actually accurate between each letter. But because I want to squash this together, I'm just going to do a little bit of measuring. Now, I did have a little look at it last night and I feel like I could start it right about at the top where the W is. Then I just have to get my ruler and I'm going to have a little rule along here. Where is, gotta come up right up here like this. Point you down a little bit more. Calculations, let's just talk about that today. I might have to add my glasses here for effect. Make me look smarter. So really so I can see. So what I'm doing is lining up my ruler with the W and I'm going to make a little tiny faint um, pencil line on the chalk paint that I've got here. Now I'm assuming that I can just erase this <laughs> from the paint once I've done my little pencil mark but that's going to help me know how far down now I can do my next letter because I kind of spaced this out before I painted it last night. I have guessed that I can do three centimetres in between each letter. So I'm going to measure three centimetres down this side and three down this side. So now you could measure from the centre and that's a smart way to do it as well. But I was just kind of doing this a um, little bit of a guesstimate. So then when I come to here, I put my ruler along where that three centimetres is going. So instead of using this large gap here, we're going to shorten the E and the W gap and we'll do that for each of the letters, just making sure there's three centimetres between each letter as we go down. So that's one way that you can get your stencils all lined up. So when I place this down here, I move my E right up to where that line is, the top of the E, so that 
that is lined up with my three centimetre line. So that's what I'll be doing all the way down my stencil. So right now, what we'll do first though, is get our W ready to stencil. Oh, now I don't know where I've got it up to. That's right. So I've lined up the end of the W with my first markings on the page. Does that make sense? They are bigger than the five inch. It's the welcome vertical set, Michelle says. Yes, so someone must have asked what the size of these actual letters are. Luckily, I picked up a ruler that has both centimetres and inches. Because I'm in Australia, we do work in centimetres. So it is about five and a half inches, the W. And yep, so they're around about five and a half. Mm, five and a quarter. Five, five and three quarters of a half. Does that, I don't even know what that is. Anyway, guys, let me get this straight. Get my W in the right place so I can get my stencil brush ready. So um, any of the links you need today for the stencil sets that I'll be using are in the, in the description of the live. And Essential Stencil usually also pins them to a comment here. Right, so I've got my W in the right place. To make sure it stays there, we just use a bit of painter's tape. Shelley says she already ordered this stencil. That's awesome. Can't wait to use it. Yes, and also there is um, a porch stencil not sure if they still have those in stock at the moment but there is a new porch stencil oh I, yeah welcome to our porch so there is this one which is amazing it's got these shadow lines on it but you'll just have to check um, use my code I restore stuff but check the website they may be out of stock of that one currently or there is only like a limited number left not quite sure on that so <clears throat> Hi Jessica says she missed the beginning. Never mind, you can always catch the replay, guys. And stay tuned because at the end of the live, we're going to be drawing three lucky winners to win some essential stencil product. Anywhere. Now, what I like to do is just have a little plastic bag on hand to wrap my brush in in between the stencils because I don't want to um, let the paint dry out. And with chalk paint, so this is artisan paint that I'm using today, it's Australian made chalk type, chalk clay based paint. <clears throat> I'm using a fairly wide Klingon 035, so it's one of our wider brushes. In fact, I think I might use even a wider one. So this is a round 20 R20 brush. And I'm going to just wrap the ends with a rubber band because they're quite long and flexible, these Klingon brushes for painting furniture. But when I'm stenciling, I like to have a little bit more of a stiffer um, stenciling, you know, tighter together bristles is how I'll describe it, just so that I can do a little bit of swirling like this. So I haven't actually stenciled with the chalk paint before. I'm usually stenciling with our fusion paint. <clears throat> oh, hi, Julie's saying good morning from Victoria, Australia. Oops, it says we're having trouble playing the video. I hope we're I hope you're seeing that okay. Just a second. Um, let me just join on with my tether with my phone there. <clears throat> let me know if you can still see that. So I'm going to use the colour Monaco. This is the Artisan Chalk Paint made in Australia. So if you're in Aussie, let us know. Okay, just going to refresh my page over here. I'm hoping and praying that you can still see us here. And looks like we're still live. Okay, we're good. All right, so I've tied my rubber band around there. What I'm going to do, because I've shaken up my chalk paint to get it all mixed around, instead of dipping it here, I'm just going to use what we've got in the lid here, add a little bit of chalk paint to the end. Look how much I've got there. Hardly anything. In fact, see that centre bit doesn't have any paint right there. I'm actually going to even wipe that off. So we want to have a really, really dry brush when we're stenciling. Oops, I've got a little piece of fluff hanging from my brush. Only a little bit of paint when we're stenciling. So I hope you like this color, I think I do. We just wanna do a little bit at a time. Actually, what I'm going to do is put my tape right up here at the end. See this W is really close to the end of my, um, to the end of the stencil. So to avoid getting that anyway, on the paint I'm going to brush around there. <clears throat> All right, hopefully you can see that. Actually, I will add a little bit more because we've got such a wide area to cover. I think I'm going to 
dabble in the middle and do my offloading in the middle section where there's lots of space. Because these letters are really wide, we've got a lot of space to stencil. So just going to just do a little round and round and round. Now this is how we don't get bleeding underneath. And I'm going to just do a second coat after I finish this, but this chalk paint actually dries super fast. So you want to work fairly quickly. And it's just a matter of practicing how much paint you need on your brush and how much you should be dry brushing off. <clears throat> okay, Essential Stencil has uh, placed the link there for you to be able to get that stenc this stencil that I'm working on now. And um, I'll be using the by the sea stencil also, so you can get 10% off any of your stencils, not just these ones, any in the shop today using the code I restore stuff. Look at that. I am liking this color. I feel like it's got a seaside look about it. A by the sea is the name of the um, stencil set I'm using to kind of coordinate with this welcome porch sign vertical sign. You could put it on the outs uh, the sign. You can leave it on the outside of your house, like for a porch welcome sign, or inside in the entryway. That's where I have mine a lot of the time. <coughs> okay, there we go. So we've got that pretty much covered. Now you can go for a sort of a more rustic look and sand it and distress it. I might even just leave it like that or second coat come back wait till that's completely dry it is drying already in fact but remember I made these if you've just joined me I've done some measuring so someone asked what color it's called this is artisans chalk and clay based paint and natural chalk finish it's Monaco is the name of that color there you go so that's made in Australia all right next I, I want to put a little bit of plastic on here while I'm getting my next stencil ready. So I've just kind of wrapped the end in plastic because the chalk paint dries super fast. Now I've got my measurements here and I measured exactly three centimeters which is around about just a little bit more than one inch. And I'm going to shift my stencil. Let me just show you how that turned out. So look at that. Nice neat lines because we offloaded, offloaded the stencil there. Oops. I just have to use, leave my other ones over here and move my E up to line up with the top of my three centimeter line here. So you'll catch on as we go through the rest of the stencil. But I also want to make sure that I'm sort of lining it up vertically in the center of the board. So here we go, moving it up to around about where I've put that other three centimeter line. We'll see how straight I am at the end of it all, won't we? Oh, this is fun. Okay, got it. When I think I'm in the right place, I'm going to pop my tape down and I'll go on with my E. Now, what I can do is, oh, I think, I, yeah, there's plenty of room there. I'm not going to actually get too far onto the board there. So let me just move this so I can see your comments. There we go. Lots of people joining from all over the States. If you're from a different country other than the USA or Canada, let me know. I'd love to see in the comments. Wave your little country flag there. My Aussie friends are joining. <laughs> okay, Teresa, who was that? Teresa says, I hate it when you have to measure and think too much when you stencil. <laughs> I know, well, here I am trying to do it and do a live at the same time. All right, just again, placing it down. Okay, when we get to the L, which is our very next letter, I have a little, a little trick and a little surprise that I'm going to do with a different stencil and see how it works. So stay tuned. And also, guys, at the end, I'll be drawing three lucky winners to uh, receive some essential stencil products. So that's going to be fun. Yep, this color's going on great. And even though 
though I'm swirling, it's not going to bleed underneath because I've offloaded as much as I can on my, with my brush. So I'm doing a little bit of stippling there just to get those edges where that E meets the edge. Ooh, just going to touch that there. If you do have any questions, let me know. Yeah, a lot of people loving this colour. It's a real um, by the sea colour, isn't it? It's called Monaco. Artisan's chalk and clay finish. An Australian brand with my friend Alison, who joined us just a second ago. I'm not sure if you're still there, Ali, but yeah. Get a shout out to her and all my fellow Aussie painters. There we go. See how well that covers. Now having a good thick brush, a wide brush is good, gets a lot done, but make sure that you have hardly anything on the end of your brush. Okay, so dry that brush off. All right, popping it back in the plastic bag so I can do my little movements and shifting. But as we get the hang of this and as we measure a little bit more, so what I'm going to do now is I have to mark the three, uh, the three centimeters in between each letter again. So where I'm going to do is mark where that E finishes on both sides. And again, I can just erase these little tiny pencil lines at the end. Then I have to measure my centimeters down again, three centimeters ready for the L for welcome. And I'm going to do something different with the L and use one of the stencils from the By the Sea range. So I'll show you those again, if you've just joined us. So that's where my L is going to have to start, three centimetres away from the E. How are we going? You're with me so far. Um, where's that? I think about my spear in here. All right, so we've done the W and the E. Remember you can use some of those, um, the sports things as well to replace letters. What I'm going to do right now is use the lighthouse to replace the length of the L. Now I haven't even tried this out to see how that's going to work, but I'm hoping I can do a lighthouse and then flick this little edge bit of the L as well at the end. So bear with me. Let's see how this works. Okay. So we wanted the L to start and I'm just kind of centering this and then I'll put my lighthouse in place. We want the L to start where I've marked the three centimeters in between the letters. Because the worst thing would be if I didn't measure out my lettering and make sure that I had enough room on this board. I've put the measurements of this board actually in the uh, description of the live up the top there. So this is about three centimeters in between the E and the L. I've got it lined up this way along there. So what I want to do now is place my lighthouse around about where I want that L to go. Oh, how am I going to do this guys? I have to have it just a little bit slightly in the middle because the lighthouse isn't quite the same length as the L but you know what? You know I just like to wing it so we're just going to do this. So how can, how can I get this to stay? I'll just measure the bottom of the lighthouse where that L is. I should have done that. Okay that's what I'm going to do. So I measure here we've got our three centimeters line right there. Then I'm going to make a couple of markings where the L finishes at the base and that's where I'm going to line up my lighthouse. Remember that you can just easily erase the pencil from the paint. Those are the markings. All right, are you with me? Why are you repositioning your letters? Because um, Kathy, <laughs> I picked, I chose a board and I didn't want to waste the board. I thought I'm going to make it fit. So I chose a board that was not, that I had in my workshop and I thought I'm just going to use that. So I'm repositioning the letters. So they're not actually, if I did them the space that they are apart, they're, I'm going to run out of room by the time I get to the end of my board. So what I had to do was just shorten this length in here. So I'm showing you a way that if you have a board that's too short, just shorten that distance between each letter, measure it out, it'll look great. So we've got the bottom of the lighthouse is going to be my, what do you call that, part of the L. It's the upright part of the letter L and I'm going to move it over a little bit more so that this end of the E kind of lines up with the end of the lighthouse. I thought it sounded like a good idea at the time, guys, so I'm really hoping this works out. Bear with me. 
All right, so I'm going to place it there. I've got edges are straight. Grab my little tape that I was using before. And I've got my brush all ready. And we're going to stencil. So once again, dipping my brush in my blue color, Monaco. Offloading a little bit. And we're adding a lighthouse. Now you could change up the colour. I could do a red lighthouse or something like that. And just for time's sake, I'm just going to do one colour today because we're kind of focusing on those, how to measure, how to adjust your stencils, tips on that kind of thing today. But at the same time, coming out with a lovely project that I hope you're all enjoying. Yeah, blue and white can never go wrong. That's what I thought. I just, I love that Hamptons look. And especially, it just seems to suit that whole seaside theme. That's where it all came from. Now the rocks here under the lighthouse. Pretty cool. So with that uh, By the Sea set, comes with a, a few different, I think there's six designs all, overall. So those are the designs right here. I'll leave that here, you can zoom in. Those are the six designs that come with the By the Sea. I'm going to use another one of those in a minute to replace another one of those letters. So there's our lighthouse. And I think at the end I will do a little bit of distressing to just give it a little bit more of a worn and weathered look as maybe it would look <laughs> if it's been beside the sea. All right, there's our, our, what do you call that? The tall part of the L. Hopefully this works, guys. Crossing fingers right now because you know sometimes I don't get the time to just practice what I'm going to do. Where's my L? Here it is. But I love the lighthouse. That's looking great. So with my L, I'm just going to add this here and hope that it doesn't look too weird. Adding the, lining that up with the E. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape right here because I don't want to go over that little section right there. What do you think? It sounded great in my head. Do you ever do that? Do you ever think, well, it's sounding great. Look, I always think if I, if I, um, oh wow, I'm scrolling too slowly on my comments here. Um, I always think it's only paint, you know, we can always just sand it back, paint over it, do something different if we wanted to. And I don't see that as wasted hours. I see that as lots of practice and perfecting the art of stenciling. So there's that. Don't forget to join in the comments. I'm going to choose some winners from our comments um, at the end of our live. Or I might choose them halfway through our live. I'm looking. I'm watching. <laughs> Rhonda says, we got faith in you, Sharon. I'm glad. I'm so glad someone's got faith in what I'm just winging it. So, all right, here we go. The big reveal. Let's see how that worked out. The sun's kind of shining in on my project here. So it's, um, I think that looks all right, guys. It kind of looks like an L. Let me see if I can hold this up for you. Or do you just want to be surprised in the end? There we go. All right, hang on. <laughs> to zoom you up a little bit sorry guys okay so it does look like an L right am I right I think it'll be fine yes we're going great guys thanks for your support I've got my cheer squad happening there alrighty so let me see if I can move the Sun can I move the Sun moving the Sun is not possible I can move my table or just pray for little clouds to go over so I've got the L but I do need to finish with this stencil on the C. So I need to actually line up and make sure I've got the three centimeters happening from that part of the L to down. So I have lined up that, that's right. So I'm moving three centimeters down for my C. Oh, where's my marker? There it is. And that means I can shift this up now and get the top of the C lined up with those marks on the side where I've <coughs> made 
made it work. See, calculating and measuring. All right, you can always catch the replay to get my wonderful explanation. I think we're good. You know, half the time I'm just, it'll work. Okay, then we go to the bottom of the C and I wanna make sure that's all straight across. And I'm just gonna mark where the base of the C is, then add three more centimeters onto that while I'm here for our next letter. Now, the letter O is the one I'm gonna replace with another one of those stencils from the By the Sea collection. So the link for that is in the comments. And don't forget, 10% off using my code iRestoreStuff for anything that you purchase in the Essential Stencil store today. So there's, um, there's a good reason to jump over and just have a look. They've got some great new summer stencils. Uh, beautiful things happening there, some, some porch stencils, all of the things. All right, I'm using again this chalk finish by Artisan, an Australian paint company today, Aussie Aussie. All right, the sun's moving a little bit. It's right on the sea there. I've got a, a lot and I haven't really, um, what do you call it, offloaded because look at all this space in the sea. What I'm doing is actually offloading my paint in the middle of the sea. So, middle of the sea, S-E-A. Kind of, it's a bit of a pun there, wasn't it? A little bit. Yeah, it's a gorgeous set. Um, you can half see my lighthouse if you've just joined. That's what I was working on for the base of the L. It sounded good at the time and I think that it worked. Put a thumbs up if you think it worked. <laughs> All right, yeah, I did put the, the measurements of this board that I'm working on today. I put the measurements up in the description of the live. But, you know, if, if you don't want to do all the measuring, um, honestly, get a board that's longer. That's what I'd say. And then you don't have to do all this measuring. But I just wanted to put that out there because sometimes you do have stencils that you go, oh, if I could just fit those words down here on this stencil, that'd be great. Um, but it, you know, it might be something that's just a little bit, not quite, your board's not quite long enough to match up with the spacing and the stencils. Here's a way that you can just shift it. Shift them and just join the letters closer together. And it doesn't look too bad at all. Just offloading the brush. I'm using my round Klingon brush and I'm using quite a, a large one of the Klingon brushes today because there's a wider spaces in these letters. Some of the smaller stencils that we get from Essential, um, I would use a smaller brush. So popping that back in the plastic, because again, chalk style paint dries super fast. And look, I'm not worried if I get, if I only do, so if, you, if I got you in really close here, you'd be able to see some of the, when I'm um, putting it on, it's not super, super solid colors. Maybe you can't see too much there. You know, you can see some little bits of gaps and things because I don't mind that distressed look. In fact, when I'm finished, I'm going to actually distress it a little bit more. All right, so remember we made this line across here about the three centimeter gap between here and here. So you use whatever measurements you wanna use, <laughs> but I'm using centimeters today. And we've just got the O and the M and the E to go. So remember I said I was gonna do something different with the O. So now I've got a line up around about where that O would be. And I think I will just take a look at it. So here's our by the sea. Let me just run these by you again, the different stencils. We've got the lighthouse, we've got the compass, and that's the one I'm going to be using to replace the letter O right here. Then there's the crab, the sea creatures, we've got whale and octopus and pelican. So those are the ones in the By the Sea collection. They would look so cute on things like coasters, placemats, um, little signs, little farmhouse sign kind of things. So, all right, so if you have a look at the O and what I'm replacing it with, this compass is quite a lot smaller than the actual O itself. So, but I'm just gonna go with that. So I just need to allow for a little bit of extra room either side of my three centimeter marking line and 
you know, just like maybe another centimetre down, I'm going to place the O just so it's not looking too odd and then I'll add that to the end. So here's our line for marking. Oops, sorry guys, just scrolling up. Oh yeah, a nice O for wave water like blue or a mat. yep. There's lots of different di things you could try to add in the centre of your O. Now remember with our front porch, the welcome sign and the front porch sign, you can also use the other sets that are available, which I showed you before. There's the sports one that Melissa used yesterday. So you can grab a hold of that. It's got all the different sports balls and things. And there is the seasonal ones. And so you could use those to replace the letter O, create some little sign boards that you can change the seasons up, like Christmas, all of the things. There's a whole bunch right in there, 12 of them, 12 pack. That's a great deal. So again, use my code, I restore stuff, and grab a hold of some of those to make your welcome signs with. All right, so we've got our three centimeter line here. I'm gonna add a little bit to that just to make it go down slightly. And a lot of this is just eyeballing it, just having a good old guess. I'm gonna shift this closer to where the W is, just so we don't get outside the edge. All right. Here we go with our little compass here, making sure I've got my letters and everything straight. I think it's a little bit crooked. All right, and our lovely nautical color called Monaco. Okay, someone said the seasons one was sold out, so you just might have to keep an eye on that to when it comes back in stock. Okay, these are little tiny tiny stencil marks, but I still can use my large stencil brush. Just have to wiggle it a little bit more. So you get your brush down in and wriggle, 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 wriggle. Oop, I've got a little bit, gone a little bit outside my edge there. I should have put some painter's tape on the outside. Getting down in and wriggle, wriggle. And again, you don't want too much on your brush because you don't want that bleeding under. So rub, um, offload. Making sure I don't go over the edge this side because I kind of went too far on the other side there. Okay, I've got most of the outside there done. This probably would be easier with a smaller brush. But now that I've got it mostly done, I'm not going to change brushes. That just means an extra brush I would have to wash out, right? Nobody wants to do that. All right, now we can do some good old swirling. And you can just keep an eye on the way you're going. I can see that it's not quite covered there, so I'm going to just dip a little bit more, try a little bit more. Yeah, someone else has said they want to do something where you can change the seasons, but they haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. I may even have to do that on another live because I had some ideas of doing that one. <clears throat> Let me show you. I found these little boards. I'll just see if I can grab them. I found um, that I had in my workshop these little ply boards. See? So I had just stained them, but you could paint them white, you could paint them any kind of color and use these. Put your stencils on there for changing the seasons. Add a little hook to either side of this and then you can just take it off and change the season out for all your little boards. There's your idea. Hope you like that one. That was for free. You might even try and do that sometime. It would be a lot of fun, but that's what I would do. That's one idea anyway. You could use card, but if, it's, if you want it something that you can change permanently. It's a great idea. There we go. Look at our little, uh, I think that turned out great. It's not huge O, but you'll be able to tell that that's the O. So where's my letters gone? They're hidden under all my things. Now with the M, I want to just make sure I've got the O a roundabout measured. So what I'm going to do is measure my markings with my pencil to where that finishes. Lining it up. 
finishes here. I do hope I've got, see, I've, where's my E gone? Yeah, oh, welcome. There is an ending E. Has it dropped? There it is. So right now, it looks like I don't have enough room on the end of my board for this. But because I've shifted everything up by a couple of centimetres, we're going to be okay, guys. So here's our three centimetres again, so that we're not... We're joining the letters closer together without cutting them, wrecking the stencils. All right, so now I shift it up to where that marking is. Three centimetres, so they're closer together. Now we'll be able to fit our E at the end. Gosh, I would hate to have measured this completely wrong and not fit my E. Classic. Oh, we're going to make it, guys. We are going to make it. I am so excited. All right. Taping this over, especially in those areas where the letters are a little bit closer to the end of your stencil. I might even put a couple more just here at the end of the M so I don't run over into my white. This beautiful white board. And then we get our... We're almost there. Stay tuned because we're going to give away some prizes. <clears throat> um, Julie says, I missed what the paint colour is. I love that shade of blue. Yep, it's gorgeous, kind of seaside blue. It's called Monaco. And this is an Australian chalk paint called Artisan Paint. So once again, swirling, swirling, swirling. If you've just caught up, we're adding in some other stencils to our welcome vertical sign stencil actually i didn't have to offload so much because i've got such a big area to fill here on the center of the m i might just do my offloading in the center and then move out see when you've got a whole lot of space to cover there I'll just shove this up a little bit more and a lot of space to fill you can offload your brush in the center of your stencil because there's a larger area so wiping the edge of the brush. Yep, Helen, you've got the idea. You could drill a hole and glue a dowel rod in your board and slide the interchange sign in and out. So we were talking about having those um, seasonal stencils and being able to do that, change them seasonally. And there are a few great ideas. If anyone else has got any ideas, pop them in the comments. Velcro idea. Someone mentioned a Velcro idea. There you go. That's a good idea too. <laughs> Someone said, wow, it's close. I know. Living on the edge. Living on the edge, Karen. Close to the end. It does look like I'm not going to fit that E, but I did. I did check it just before and I checked it and measured last night so but I didn't actually stencil it on anywhere last night but I'm just measuring being very calculated thought yes we can do this so it worked out in measurement <laughs> and it's now it's working out in reality I'm so happy we're gonna make it guys <laughs> all right so we've got some um, distressed bits there but like I said before I'm going to actually distress this a little bit more when it's all dry and this chalk paint it really dries fast so okay so what I haven't done yet is actually measured from the base of the M let me see where our tape is this is what we've been doing all along to get our clo letters closer together so I make some markings at the end of the M where that finishes and then three centimeters down from that is where we will begin the letter E the last letter on the board and then we'll be able to see what it all turned out like and there's the M and the letter E will then go right here where we lined up that three centimeter marking 
think I'm, am I moving across? I think I've moved my M across slightly. Oh, okay, so the E is shorter than the M. We have to center that a bit more, a bit better. And we've still got a gap at the bottom of around about the same space that I have at the top. Guys, this is where I just breathe a huge sigh of relief that I have gone live and <laughs> done it without the great big mistake. But anyway, we do make mistakes here on lives occasionally and it's all part of learning and you get to see, hey, we're real. <laughs> and sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. And like I said, it's just paint. We can always go over it, sand it back, start again. All right, so hopefully you've learned some tips on measuring your your boards and measuring your stencils to fit. So what I could have done too, the other way of measuring this, is to start at the center, which I would normally do that if I'm doing sort of horizontal signs and that kind of thing. I do like to measure from the center letter outwards. Um, but this one I kind of, I measured it up last night, estimated a little bit, and then as you could see, I didn't offload just then either. I plumped it in the middle of that big white space with the E and then working out towards the edges. So I've got better. Oh, can you see that? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Making sure we're in the center of the camera. So many things to think about. All right. Yeah. Yes, I will have to post a picture of the finished board <coughs> on my porch. My porch isn't very exciting actually, but I could put it in my front entryway. There's a few more exciting things in there. Oh, someone suggested um, to use a magnetic paint. I have heard of magnetic paint and then you could put magnets on the back of each of your seasonal little stencils that you're going to put in there. That's a good idea. Lots of great ideas coming up. Carrie's excited to get the honeybee stencils. I know, I love the honeybee stencils. They're back in stock. I saw, I noticed. So don't forget to grab yours, but use my code, guys. Use the code I restore stuff so you get your 10% off. I am loving this color. I feel like it's very C Hamptons y. All right, um, I think I'm done. I will pop that in the water later and get that all soaked off. <clears throat> it's time to win our, not win, it's time to choose our winners. Get my brush and pencil ready and check out your comments. Let me see if I can, so I've got those little pen, pencil markings I need to rub off. I also am going to do a little bit of distressing so I can do that. Um, and also I want to seal it. So with most chalk paints, you kind of need a bit of a sealer because they have a porous finish. So either a wax or a varnish, I might just use a, a poly sealer on that or even like a hemp oil or something. See if I can get that up for you to see. And then I'll have to pick through and scroll through and look for some winners. Oh, hang on a second. Have I got all my letters in? Welcome. I'm just making sure I spelt it right. That's always a, that's always. Ah. Just gonna write down some winners, hang on. But first I'll show you my sign. Let me see if I can place it back here. Maybe I can put it on the chair and then I'll zoom you back. almost high enough that you can see I'll pop it back a little bit further is that better you can see the welcome oh. kind of sorta we almost fit it all in so we've got the lighthouse there from the um, by the sea I keep forgetting the name of it by the sea stencil set and then we've got the O here from the same set and I've just got a little bit of a mistake. I just got to sand that off. It could erase those little pencil markings. And we've got a gorgeous Hampton sign there. I am going to look for some winners. So stay tuned. Hang on a second. Um, 
Connie's asking about where you can purchase the sanding gloves. They're at sandyhands.com if you're in Australia or UK or Europe to find your nearest retailer. Um, Oh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I get halfway through writing a name down and then it just jumps up and scrolls somewhere else. You guys are going crazy with your comments. <laughs> All right. So we've got three winners, I believe. Oh, if I can read my own writing. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching tonight. All right, we have, um, let me just pop this up so I don't have to bend down. Okay, so first winner is Jerry, I think it's Naquin. Naquin, is, have I, am I saying your name right? J-E-R-I, Naquin. And Brenda Aker, and so Brenda, you're a winner tonight and Tammy Brockman. Tammy Brockman, you're another winner. So three winners there. If you can email uh, your details to uh, support at essentialstencil.com and they will get you a prize. So I'm so glad you joined me today. Here we are with our welcome sign. This is what we worked on. So if you just joined the live, um, Go back and watch the replay because I'll show you how to measure, how to calculate when you think your board is a little bit too short for the sign that you'll be working on. So there's my vertical porch sign. I'll be taking some photos of that in my entryway that I can show you later on. And some really great ideas. If you missed them, scroll back through the comments for changing out your letters in this section where the O is. So there's some great ideas for the, both this sign and if you did receive the welcome to our porch sign, um, you can change out the letters for the sports letters. So we've got the baseball, basketball, football, uh, baseball bats even. So you can change out those letters for the O. You can do what I did and use the by the sea, the, the um, compass in there or a few other things. You could even have put probably the little crab in there. So there's a few different ideas for that. The other one was there were some great ideas in the comments for the seasonal uh, ones. So how to interchange that. And I suggested something like using these kind of little boards that you could put place on hooks to go over that and then just replace them, lift them off the hook for each season. So some great ideas there. You guys are awesome. And I will catch you next time, next week, next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Or if you're in Australia, give me a shout out because I'd love to have you follow me over on my page, I Restore Stuff. So check me out there and I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>